Hello YouTube, Mr. Forks. Creating Harry Potter spells in Adobe After Effects. Um, this is quite sweet. Uh, to kind of work out how to do this effect, I had Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, and we're just looking at a couple of the spells casted, and just to try and recreate that as well as possible, basically anyway. I mean, don't expect to follow this tutorial and then make a blockbuster visual effects film, because I'm very sure they didn't just use After Effects to make them spells. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to add a ring. Right click, new solid, go make it white, make comp size, and we're going to call this outer ring. Let's hide the layer, click on the eye. And what we're doing, we're basically creating the edge of the spell. I'm going to go forward to when he casts it, which is about here. There. And then let's create an inner ring as well. And then if we show the layout, we want to make sure we set the mask to to subtract and as you can see it's already looking good what we're going to do is with the layer selected hold down alt and press open bracket and that cuts it to the start point so it's literally just going to go down and appear we zoom in a bit command plus and also plus to zoom in in the timeline. You can see this looks great but not very good. We're basically going to add a rough and edges. Rough and edges. Just type it in this effects and presets search then. Going to hide the masks so we can see what we're working with. It's already looking a bit better. Can increase the sharpness a little. Actually, uh, decrease that. Increase the scale a little and I'll click the evolution time times 50. And that would just mean that it, sh it should wriggle a little. And the spell only going to last for about three frames, then we can alt and outer bracket it. Just like that. Now we want to add a slight blur. Just add a fast blur because it's fast to render repeat edge pixels. And just like that, just one pixel will do. Now we're going to add a CC radial fast blur. It's at the midpoint to the actual wand point itself. You can see we're getting some hard artifacts here. If we turn on the continuously rasterize, see it hides them. And what I want to do over the three keyframes, keyframe the amount. And at the end, boost it up to like a hundred. And also keep in the center. We get press page down to go to the next frame. Just make sure the center is always the wand. Now we extend this out a bit and hit T and then go to the last frame and set the opacity to zero. And you can see we've very quickly created this kind of bursting light effect. What you might want to do is, on the scale, use the pan behind tool to move the point of orientation to the one. 
and keyframe the scale, and then go to the first frame of the spell and decrease it. So it just kind of gives it a little bit more motion. We're also going to be adding glow, but that's quite processor intensive, so I don't want to add the glow just yet. We can duplicate this layer, but hit M to go into the masks. We're going to get rid of the first mask and set the second mask to add. And then also MM to bring up our other mask properties, and we're going to decrease the mask expansion. minus to zoom out of the timeline and very quickly we've created something that could pass off as a spell but doesn't actually have any direction to it if you see what I mean it just looks like a glowing burst which is fine might be what you want but not in this case we want an actual spell casting and really if we were shooting this for real then we would want our actor further over so we can see the spell travel what I'm going to do is duplicate our outer ring well, let's rename this, hit enter, call this inner circle, and then call this beam. And this beam, we're going to stretch it out, just grab down, tool thing there. And basically, make sure motion blur is turned on for it. Turn it on for the composition in a second. And we just want to move it one frame over. Hit P for position, then page down to go to the next frame. Zoom out. I'm just going to move this to there so it travels very fast. Can we just play this back quickly? You can see. It looks like something's shooting out now. But at the moment, it does very much look like someone has just drawn a few shapes in After Effects. So, what can we do to add a bit more realism? So, we're going to add some sparks. And this is from Action Essentials 2. Uh, if you don't have that, check out Detonation Films. And you can see that it's just some sparks, like I just said. We're going to rotate it. Hit W for the rotation tool, or the rotation tool, as Andrew Cameron once pointed out. V to move into position. To scale it down, if you start scaling it down and then hold shift, you can uniform scale. You can't hold down shift and then start scaling. Just a quick tip. But you only want a couple of frames of this, so we're going to alt begin it here and then page down. And then Alt end it there. And scale it down even more. Reposition it, put it behind um, the inner circle. And also, effect color correction tint, effect color correction levels. I'm just going to make it so it's pretty much pure white.
So it looks like it's sparking a bit. The next thing we want to do is add in this element, double click it, we can preview it, which is a burst of light and then the sparks flicker a bit. So there's a couple of things we want to do to get it ready for this comp composition. I'm going to drag it over in the right time. And we also want to add a mask. So with the layer selecting, hit the circle ellipse tool, and then draw it like that. And then we can hit feather, F for feather, and feather it out a bit. We want to add the same effects that we added to our previous sparks. We just Command C or Control C them. Add them to the file cracker. So it's pure white. Put that. I'm going to put it above the inner circle for now, just to see how it looks. And then turn off the mask visibility. Hit S for scale and bring the scale down. And what's good about this is that this is a bit more lifelike um, because if you just draw elements to add powers they're very hard to relate to and the audience will feel disconnected with the film whereas if you add realistic elements such as sparks then it will work. 